Hello everybody, welcome back to my survival world. I'm Roto, and today we're gonna be making the bank for our coastal city. Should be a pretty fun episode. I'm gonna be making a piston door for it, and all in all, I think it'll be a pretty cool build. I hope you guys learned something, and personally, I think it'll be a pretty interesting, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get started. So today, since we're going to be making a bank, I've come up with a design already in creative because it's going to be a pretty important build in our city. So this bank is going to kind of control the city. It'll hold like a lot of the diamonds and gold and all of like the wealth of the city and kind of be like an actual government in a way because I'm not planning to put any like castle in or anything like that. So the bank will control it. It's in a very central location in the city as well, overlooking the ocean. So it's kind of like in a very good location. And it's not a huge build, but it's big enough that it'll stand out somewhat. And I've also used like quartz and really good looking materials. So it'll look kind of fancy and stand out in that way as well. Right now all I'm doing for the first step of this build is just framing it out with dark oak and quartz as well. So I'm going to get that done and then we'll be able to actually start adding the piston door. I'm also going to need to clear out quite a bit of space under the ground for all the redstone. I'm going to be trying to put the redstone underneath the ground so that it's not inside the building as much as possible. If you've never seen or heard of a piston door before, what a piston door is, is a door that uses pistons or sticky pistons or both to make it, it open or close for the player. So usually it's redstone activated and they might be simpler or more difficult to build. The one that I'm building is 3x3, three three, which means it's 3 blocks tall and 3 blocks wide. And the design, I didn't come up with it myself, it's actually by someone named the Bowtie Man on YouTube. He makes some great videos and does a lot of cool things with redstone in Minecraft. So go check him out for sure, especially if you play Bedrock Edition like myself. I'll try to explain how the piston door works, but if you want a tutorial on how to build it, you'll need to watch the Bowtie Man's video. I don't really know what's going on with it, and I'm not the person to ask about redstone. I mostly like to build, so a lot of this is actually new to me. I've just finished clearing out all of the space, or at least most of what I'll need to build the piston door, so now I can actually start putting the piston door in. I'm going to be following the tutorial on the Bowtie Man's channel, and if you're building this yourself, I'd recommend you do the same. I'm just going to get the piston door finished and I'll be back with you in a minute. Here's the finished piston door. It's not properly set up yet because I still need to do the activation system for each side. But this is the fully built piston door as far as the door itself goes. So I can use this lever to open it and close it. I'll show you that a couple times. But yeah, now we're going to have to set up the actual button mechanism to open it up and close it from the outside and the inside. Redstone on Minecraft Bedrock Edition is kind of weird, and the only way to activate this piston door properly is either with a lever on the dropper or with a piston, a sticky piston, and a redstone block going to the repeater or the redstone dust, sorry, that is on top of the dropper. To work around this, we're going to put a button that goes into a block powering a pulse extender. This pulse extender will keep the door open for longer so that we have time to run through it. The pulse extender that I'm using is two comparators going in one direction next to two comparators going in the other direction and four redstone dust, two on each side touching the comparators. Next, we put a 
redstone torch on the side of the pulse extender and run that into a redstone line feeding all the way into the sticky piston holding the redstone torch. This will activate the door closing it. Now your door will work from one side. You will be able to press the button from the outside and the door will open. To connect it to the inside, simply add a button on the inside area and then add a redstone line coming out of the bottom of that, feeding directly back into the pulse extender. This will do the exact same thing as the first button and allow your door to be opened and closed from both sides. Now you're done. The piston door is completely finished now, so here is a small time lapse of me actually building up the bank. I hope you enjoy it, it's only around a minute and a half long, so it should be fairly quick. Alright, so anything that wasn't finished on the time lapse as far as the exterior goes, I just finished off camera. And now we're just going to focus on the interior. The first thing that we're going to do in the interior is a fireplace. I thought it would be interesting to add a fireplace. For one, because it's a medieval type build, so they wouldn't have had electricity for heat. And also because I think it just kind of adds a good aesthetic to the whole place and it also means that we can have a chimney on the outside which adds stuff of course just makes it look better always this whole fireplace is going to be made out of stone bricks and cracked stone bricks it's going to be using quite a bit of stairs and slabs and it's going to have a uh, type of shelf thing i don't know what they're called exactly but it's like a weird shelf thing that goes around the top of the fireplace and we'll put some lanterns on those to light the whole area up a little bit. I'm just finishing up the fireplace now. I'm going to replace these three log blocks with uh, stone bricks just to make it kind of go into the ceiling. But yeah, here's the uh, fireplace. I think it looks decent. And yeah, the top part that I just finished now, I think that should work. So now i got to work on that bit up there because I'm going to be starting to add in actual blocks of like diamonds, gold, and uh, emeralds. So I need some good places to actually put them in. And the diamonds are going to go up there. I cleaned up the area up here a little bit, so this should be looking better now. Um, I'm going to add the diamond blocks in here now. I wanted to add the diamond blocks up here because it's kind of like the most protected location. It's like really up high. So it'll look like they're really important. I'm just going to pile them on there. Didn't bring a ton of diamond blocks, but it should be like enough to where it looks realistic for a bank. Just going to put the iron bars on here, make it look like a little bit more protected and like they're important. Or maybe it makes it look like they're in jail. It's all how you look at it, I guess. 
but yeah there's the uh there's the diamonds so those are gonna go up there and then i'll just add the emeralds and the gold at the sides i've brought quite a bit more emeralds and gold than i did for the diamonds like i have a ton of emeralds from trading with villagers and I have a ton of gold because I have a gold farm in my farming area. So those were not a problem to get. All right, I'm finished the bank completely now. I'll just fly around and show you guys. Uh, there's a little bit of snow on the roof. Guess it's high enough up for that to happen. That's cool. But yeah, I'll fly around, show you guys. Looks pretty cool in my opinion. I added the quartz pillars along the sides as well. And then there's the fireplace and the chimney and another side. You can see the quartz there. And then there's the front. So I, I put the diamond in the uh, in the door. I think that looks kind of cool. Go inside. And you can see that I added a carpet in here as well. There's a uh, glowstone underneath that to kind of light the place up. But yeah, there's the gold, the diamonds, and then the emeralds are down there. There's the fireplace. So, yeah, I think it's a pretty cool build. I'm happy with it. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad I designed it in creative because it definitely wouldn't have came out this good if I hadn't. Now that I'm done the bank, I can actually start working on some of the pathways for our village. So that's good because I haven't been able to get the time to do any of those yet. But, yeah, now we can actually start on those. I'm going to mark out the pathways with path blocks now instead of uh, the orange concrete powder because I'm actually going to be using path blocks in the build. So I'll mark it out with the path blocks and then come back in after with gravel and coarse dirt. And I think that's pretty much going to be the entire path. Maybe later in like a later episode I'll get around to putting... Uh, spruce uh, stairs or slabs to make it uh, when there's like a incline or decline so that I can actually go up hills without jumping but for now I'm not gonna worry about that eventually the paths will go across the entire village but for now I'm only going to be doing it around the bank mainly because I don't have a lot of time left to do this and get the video out for this week. So I'm just going to get uh, pathways done for around the bank and that'll be it for this video. I'm also going to get one bridge done for this video. So that should be interesting. It's something that I have been wanting to add as well. The first thing that we're going to do to build the bridge is lay out campfires like this on a bridge that we already made out of stone. After that, I'll just be able to put them out with either a shovel or with water buckets. And that way we can get a bridge that kind of looks like planks laid across each other. Now all I need to do is take the stone out from underneath. I'll remove all the stone and then I can put some spruce stairs underneath to make it look supported. And then I'll add spruce trapdoors all along the sides as kind of like little railings. And that'll pretty much be it. Here's the finished bridge now. It's completely done. So I've added the uh, trapdoors to the outside like a railing and this is actually like the first bridge that I've built that is like this type with the campfires so I'm kind of happy with it I think it looks okay anyways this is the end of the video now I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I had fun making the bank and the piston door a little bit of redstone this episode that was different but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to leave a like. And if you have any tips for me or something you want to say, drop it in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.